Mr. Investor Lord, welcome back to the channel, baby. Okie dokie. Mm -hmm. We're talking about our fresh and tasty stock bio nanogenomics. So we've recently had an earnings call. Here's this transcript. So we're going to go through this. We're going to be talking about revenue and start breaking it down. We're also going to be talking about any issues that people are talking about, you know, in terms of dilution, in terms of, you know, having enough capital, cash burn. And we'll also look at other market factors that could affect bio nanogenomics. But now, before we begin, please hit that juicy like button. Hit me with a subscribe. Drop me some comments down below. Let me know how you're feeling about your investment in bingo and please always remember none of this is financial advice for entertainment only i wish you a lovely day and i hope you enjoy the video so in the last month or so it seems like the lows are getting higher i've been trying to pick up some more bingo shares i've been trying to buy some at one dollar fifty but it hasn't come down to one dollar fifty yet in fact the last time it was in the one dollar fifty range i believe it was somewhere between june july and i'm waiting for the perfect storm to sell my occidental petroleum and buy totally with that money bio nanogenomics before we begin to look at the earnings call and start to break it down and tell you my thoughts and feelings on this earnings call i want you to take a look at a picture bio nanogenomics posted you see about two days ago this was posted by bio nanogenomics talking about this room and if you take a look here not only we see people sitting down and it's a packed room as we can agree we can see lots of people standing at the back and if you look at bottom left down here you'll see some legs as well people are like sitting on the floor the information they came out with that day was dr rashmi kanagal shamana from MD Anderson discussing the high resolution level of detection of structural variants by optical genome mapping. So what she said was 51% of structural variants detected by optical genome mapping were missed by karyotyping. This is a traditional cytogenetic method that they have in play. 51% of structural variants detected by optical genome mapping were missed by this method. Now she went on to say actionable variants were uniquely detected by optical genome mapping in 15% of patients. Now, all the people in this room, they must have some sort of interest in optical genome mapping to be sitting there in this kind of seminar room. It looks like a big hall where there's presentations being held. Now let's take a look at another presentation just recently. By the way, what is this event and where are the presentations held? It's AMPATH 22. AMPATH 22 is an annual meeting and expo for the Association for Molecular Pathology. And what I noticed was looking at their tweets, if you scroll down, there was a room here talking about, you know, presentations held today. And I just want you to take a look at this presentation. So you saw how much demand there was for optical genome mapping, how much interest. This one is a presentation for uh, whole genome sequencing, talking about myeloid malignancies. And the room looks half empty or even more than half empty. It looks just, just a few people in the crowd. This presentation was actually on the 5th of November, so it was today, and it's been tweeted and retweeted by the Association for Molecular Pathology. Now, don't think just because it's the last day of this event that it's dead, because it's not. As we can see, there's a lot of networking going on. It's like a final dinner party where everybody networks and mingles and dances, has dinner, but they're there to network and do business. And just today posted as well, it shows that a room is still completely packed with diners and people working within the genomics industry. So in the next few videos as well following, I'm going to show you all of the different publications that are coming out of the moment and what they're utilizing the sapphire system and optical genome mapping for but just look at the level of interest in this packed room for this presentation and just look at what they're coming out with some of these scientists people who are world-renowned scientists who are heads of the cancer genomics consortium that's rashmi kanagal shamana she's the president of the um CGC. And these guys are coming out with the latest research. This is the Cancer Genomics Consortium and they help push the guidelines to what is useful in cancer. And I just want to show you here that on the 4th of August 2022, so this year, Rashmi Kanagal Shamana, who you just saw presenting with everybody so interested in optical genome mapping, was talking about how humbled and honored she was to be elected the president-elect program chair of the Cancer Genomics Consortium. Now let's go over to the earnings call and let's scroll all the way down and talk about revenue. So the first thing um, Eric Homelin was talking about was the total total revenue for this third quarter and it was 7.2 million dollars for the quarter which represents another record revenue for the company and an increase of 55% over the third quarter in 2021. Now for me this is decent you can see they're scaling up and they actually provided guidance as well into the next quarter. So let's look at the first quarter and the second quarter of 2022. First quarter Q1 2022 was 5.7 million dollars. The second quarter was 6.7 million dollars in Q2 2022 and now we have 7.2 million dollars in revenue. So first let's talk about flow cell usage. This is something that um, people are concerned about. 
So they said, you know, they've sold 3,975 flow cells in the quarter. They said this is a record in any quarter in the company's history. But people said they're kind of sugarcoating it because a year ago in the third quarter, they had 3,969 flow cells. So they said over a year's passed and they've only beat their flow cell records by another six flow cells sold. What people fail to realize is people are buying Sapphire systems. You know, genomics is still in a really young phase. And I'll bring you to one tweet, which will prove my point. Not only if, if you've seen my previous videos, you may have seen that Eric Topol was talking about, uh, he sent me an email actually. He just said yes to all three things. I spoke to him about whole genome sequencing I spoke to him about optical genome mapping and I spoke about lots of these long range technology and I said are they going to be embedded into the NHS here on the October 10th 2022 this is the Northeast and Yorkshire Genomics Center this is part of the NHS and they're talking about building optical genome mapping techniques into routine care they're stating we are embedding genomics into routine clinical care for faster and more personalized diagnosis personalized treatment and prevention and now what they want to do is train up nurses as well there's lots of uh, talk about nurses and genomics so if you've got somebody is part of the National Health Service here who's adopted the Sapphire system, who's experimented with optical genome mapping for over a year. And they've come out and said, we're now gonna embed it into routine care. Although we are concerned about the flow cells, what happens when the Sapphire system come, becomes part of routine care and we can start to see it utilized for cancer and rare disease and many other uses? We're still early stage in adoption here. You know, we only have what, 200 Sapphire systems, 200 or so. This is a NASDAQ article we can see here. They were just talking about Sapphire systems installed and the installed base of Sapphire systems has reached now 217 at the end of Q3 2022. This install base has increased by 21 in the last quarter. So they've shifted and installed 21 Sapphire systems. Now to really bring this home, to hit a home run with this, we need to see the Sapphire system being used a lot. That's what people are concerned about. But the people that have actually got the Sapphire systems initially, because we're waiting on reimbursement codes, we're waiting on so many different things, waiting for it to be built into guidelines, right? We're waiting for people to use it as part of routine care. The people who've had the Sapphire system were mainly researchers. So people who are researching, coming out with publications and articles to push optical genome mapping into the limelight. And so how often do these people publish studies? How long does a study take? And what are the sample sizes? Are you going to be doing studies on thousands and thousands of people, like 100,000 people? I haven't seen a study like that yet. The only study I've seen like that is utilizing whole genome sequencing and it was with the NHS and the 100,000 genome pilot. So for them to sell a similar just under 4,000 flow cells in the quarter, you know, we'll start to see this ramp up or we hope so and create this kind of snowballing effect as we start the hill with a, you know, an installed base of 200 Sapphire systems. What happens when we have a thousand Sapphire systems that are utinly used for cancer diagnostics? Will we see that start to snowball in terms of adoption, but also usage and create this giant avalanche of Sapphire systems and flow cell usage? That is the question. And while that question is running people concerned about cash burn rates and now the operating expense for q3 was 34 million dollars so although we had revenues of what seven point something million dollars revenue of 7.2 million dollars 34 million is quite the expenditure but as we can see here the capitalization remained strong with 180 million in cash now how did they have this they continued to do these at the market facilities so they included raising 22.5 million dollars in net proceeds by selling 6.6 .6 million shares on the open markets we'll take a brief calculation of this 22.5 million dollars and 6.6 .6 million shares and it comes up to around three dollars 40 cents just under three dollars 41 cents per share sold so they must have sold it round about the recent pop when we had, you know, genomic stocks starting to pop again, lots of the small caps and uh, all the genomic stocks started to pop at the same time. And they probably sold it around about August. So this kind of ATM facility is what public traded companies use in order to raise capital over time. Whenever their stock price pops, they're able to sell it on the open market. The problem for our shareholders though, is that it creates dilution. So we're starting to get diluted a bit more. But is this dilution warranted if, you know, we're able to fulfill the business plan? They're sticking to the plan and they're using that ATM facility to raise cash. Now with the previous revenue, revenues of each quarter ramping up 5.7 6.7 in the last q1 and q2 now in q3 7.2 i'm expecting around about 7.7 .7 million dollars worth of revenue in the last quarter within their range they're saying around about 7.5 to 8 million dollars and they're stating that their full year should be just over 27 million dollars worth of revenue previously you know people were estimating around about 26 million dollars of revenue 25 somewhere between 24 to 27 million dollars now in terms of revenue growth if we go over to chart meals they state that bingo still shows a very strong revenue growth. Revenue has grown by 76.48% and they believe their estimations is it's going to be just under 27 mil 
around about $26.9 million in 2022. And if we look at the prediction for the future, they're stating in the next one year, they expect revenue growth to be 53%. And then it's going to start to scale up in year two. So in two years time, they believe 65.16% three years time another 72 percent after that and five years time 76 percent the reason why is they can see you know in terms of legislation and guidelines people believe that bio nanogenomics these optical genome mapping technique is going to get all of the insurance reimbursement codes which is going to help in terms of adoption in laboratories to uptake this they then believe that people are going to utilize the sapphire system for many different things and if somebody comes up with something like a screening tool or for it to be utilized in cancer rare disease or even somebody who's looking currently at dementia, like a pre-symptomatic screening tool, then revenue and adoption could fly, absolutely fly. But yeah, in terms of 2023, they're stating that they believe the full year estimate is going to be about $48 million. They believe 2024, it's going to be $90 million per year. 2025, $162 million per year. And 2026 is $297.3 million per year. People are concerned that, you know, they should look at the at the market offerings and see how much we got left and how many shares they can continue to sell. And although we may have these small bits of dilution along the way if our revenue start to increase and we can get sapphire systems adopted if they do manage to make it to their total addressable market and the potential addressable market on top this could be a very juicy company and extremely tasty revenues coming in so let's see how this plays out in terms of yearly revenues okay so let's take a look at this uh market opportunity the total addressable market so the current opportunity that they've been talking about is the cytogenomics market so they're talking about converting over this cytogenomics market that runs four million samples right and they're stating that there's around about six thousand labs worldwide there's it can complement sequencing and there's about 15,000 sequences installed worldwide. So this current market opportunity that they're talking about addressing is worth about $4 billion. Now the other $4 billion over here is markets that they can spill into. So they were talking about stem cells and cell bioprocessing and quality checking all of those stem cells. And this is a lot to do with, I think he was talking about genetic editing. The next future market expansion opportunity is population genomics, then speaking about risk assessment. So for neurologic and cardiovascular disease, and then again, screening, newborn screening, this is going to be a massive one in the UK because they're planning to save a lot of kids lives so they want to develop screening tools and they're currently utilizing whole genome sequencing and this is complementary and can be used alongside okay so let's talk about Eric Homeland's statement now he was discussing these market opportunities for optical genome mapping so he said overall it's about valued at around eight billion dollars across the areas of cytogenomics, discovery research, and quality check for cell bioprocessing and a handful of other applications. He stated that they estimate the number of cytogenetic laboratories on a worldwide basis is around about 6,000, and the number of samples that they're analyzing is approximately 4.2 million per year. So if we can get this, if there's 15,000 sequences and we're complementary to them, can we get this on a one-to-one -one basis with all those sequences? So this looks like a significant market opportunity. So now let's look at our market cap. For a company that's valued around about 660 4 million US dollars and a market potential of around 8 billion dollars. Let's just compare to Illumina so you guys can take a look. Illumina is currently on track to make just over $4 billion this year. It made $1.12 billion in the last quarter. And the quarter before that, they made $1.16 billion US dollars. Their market cap is around $35 billion US dollars. And this is with the current market cap being sliced completely over the last year. Lots of these genomic stocks have been hit really hard. So it's lost 45% off its stock price with so many sequences out there in the world and a very few optical genome mappers you know the sapphire system if we can get a one-to-one -one basis with all of these sequences not only illumina but we're talking about loads of high throughput sequences and with these expanding markets where the potential is around about 8 billion us dollars per year in revenue total addressable market even if we just look at the cytogenomics market making around about 4 billion dollars in revenue we should be around about illumina size if we were to compare so what more if we were making 8 billion a year now while we're waiting people concerned about the cash burn so there's atm for that at the market offering so they can continue to generate capital people are also concerned about war so what if there's a disruption to our flow cells what if you know taiwan and china what if china invades taiwan and it causes a shortage in semiconductor materials and it affects our flow cells after all the semiconductor materials you can see here that illumina utilizes them a semiconductor chip for bio nanogenomics but they said that they leverage semiconductor manufacturing and they were utilizing their high capacity flow cells their single use consumable cartridge i was trying to look through bio nano chips and i wanted to look at their flow cells and i'm not sure where the flow cells get manufactured or if the suppliers you know for bio nanogenomics flow cells whoever's manufacturing them if they'd be concerned with you know taiwan one being invaded by China. Here on Bloomberg, they were talking about US's China threats on chips. The Taipei Times stated that war could be sooner than expected and that communist China plans to invade Taiwan. 
and history says that it's likely to happen sooner rather than later. Another concern is reimbursements and Medicare and how long it's going to take for, you know, different codes. But I also want you to remember that people who are currently working with the Sapphire system, let's take a look over in South Africa, for example. This was an article I've been through before and I've shown you guys. Joanne Kotze, she's the head of genetics at Indelo Bio says that she's been following BioNano's progress for years and she finally took the leap and started to look at the Sapphire system. She states that she is the national board examiner for the specialized field of cytogenetics of the Society of Medical Laboratory Technologists of South Africa and her goal is to formally register their Sapphire-based laboratory as a training laboratory for the field of cytogenomics and write OGM, optical genome mapping, into the South African cytogenetic guidelines. Yet again, so many people have said it about this potential to replace, you know, current methods. She stated she believes that optical genome mapping has the potential to revolutionize cytogenetic analysis in Africa and the rest of the world. Eric Holmlin stated BioNanogenomics believes that the assays Indelo Bio will develop on Sapphire can help democratize access to technology and ultimately help to improve the lives of patients all over the world. So recently they spoke about, you know, the reimbursement codes that they got for optical genome mapping. One of them was for Ravindra Kohi's lab. And this was absolutely magical. And he said that this is the first time in the United States a payer has assigned a reimbursement amount for optical genome mapping in clinical diagnostic laboratory fee schedule. He's really excited and proud of his lab and his collaborators involved in the process to get to the point in this journey to bring optical genome Genome mapping into clinical laboratories. So they got some uh, PLA codes, as you can see here, 0260U and 0331U. And this one was by AMA. This is the professional organization known as the American Medical Association. So the question is, you know, am I pleased with currently the results? I can see things growing out. You know, a lot of people are too focused on small things like, oh, it's not being utilized enough. The flow cells, they're not being utilized. I want to see it ramp up. And they've calculated and they've looked at, you know, year by year, quarter by quarter that the flow cell usage is dropping. Well, when optical genome mapping or if optical genome mapping is built into routine care, like the NHS has said they want to, what do you think the flow cell usage is going to look like then? If they're to utilize, you know, whole genome sequencing alongside optical genome mapping for newborn screening or even for a pre-symptomatic screening tool for dementia, that's when I think, you know, we'll start to see lots of flow cells being utilized. And with that ATM facility, I'm not concerned about running out of cash. If they do have to do a small dilution, they will. In order to get the cash runway they need for, you know, guidelines to be changed, for optical genome mapping to be written into the guidelines, for reimbursement codes, if they go down the route of FDA approval with the new Sapphire 2.0, and then we're talking about deals with Hamilton, we're talking about Hamilton bringing automation to the table to make it easier to use and a walkaway system for automation, allowing people to have an easier workflow for them to be able to walk away from the machine as well. And then we're looking at also national health systems like the NHS here in the UK, if they have Illumina's machines in each one of their genetic hubs, and if they're able to utilize the Sapphire system and adopt it and put one in each of their hubs as well, then we're talking about areas of England, lots of different areas in England and the UK. We're talking about one of seven hubs and the hubs are situated all across England. There's one in Birmingham, there's one in Cambridge, there's another in Manchester, one at Great Ormond Street in central London, then there's another one in London, guys in St. Thomas's, then one in North Bristol, and the one where our Sapphire system is placed is the Newcastle upon Tyne Hospitals NHS Foundation Trust. And if you go to the website as well, you can see here it says genomic laboratory hubs nhs england you'll see northeast and yorkshire genomic laboratory hub this is one of seven hubs that serves you know a large area in the north and they want to talk about utilizing optical genome mapping techniques embedding it genomics into routine clinical care so when you think about volume of flow cells think about these guys and then think about all the other hubs also getting a sapphire system if these guys have proven it to be you know better for patient care. Then think about all the different hospitals, private hospitals, the laboratories as well based around England. And then go outside of England and think, you know, if the UK wants to be at the center of genomics, they want to be innovators and they're adopting the Sapphire system and optical genome mapping. In America, they're doing that too. In South Korea, in South Africa even, all of the different spots can you imagine across the world that it, they reach their full kind of scope for 15,000 sequences, you know, say 15,000 Sapphire systems alongside those sequences? We'll be looking at one hell of a company. And I want you guys just to take a look and think current applications that they're utilizing it for. Cancer is a disease of structural variation. And particularly they're looking at blood cancers, right? As well as solid tumors. Then they're also looking at genetic disease, genetic disorders. With researchers currently using the Sapphire system, in the next few videos, I'll show you what they're looking at at the moment. And, you you know, we've, we're talking about this human market mainly.
mainly, but what if we start to utilize it for the non-human market too? Talking about bacteria, you know, viruses, including in 2022 when they were mapping out some C19 patients who were severely ill and to see if there's any links in their genome and to reasons why they were becoming more ill than other people. Then also think about agriculture, think about fish, think about cattle, what they're currently doing in Scotland. Remembering the Nature article from a few videos ago talking about looking at cattle breeds, the structural variants of them and to figure out why some of them are susceptible to disease while others are not. Yes, they use bio-nanogenomics optical mapping for that too. I've also seen it used for dogs, for German shepherds. This was actually used in 2020 in a study because they were looking at the German shepherd dog as one of the common breeds on earth and as is bred for like utility. It's a working dog and it's quite intelligent. So there's so much you can explore with the Sapphire system with optical genome mapping. And to be honest, I would love for the stock price to come down so I can continue to dollar cost average in and I'm hoping for the perfect storm so I can sell the oil stocks that I have. And all I'll be doing is selling those assets and completely buying into BioNanogenomics because this is the company that I want to invest in and I believe that has a good chance for exponential growth in the future. Now, please remember, none of this is financial advice for entertainment only. If you enjoyed this video, please hit me with a like, click subscribe, drop me some comments down below. Tell me about any problems that you think BioNanogenomics is going to have in terms of scaling up. Is there any problems that you think that will inhibit its growth? And tell me some plus sides. Tell me anything that you know, if anything's come out at the moment in terms of research, fresh and hot out the kitchen or niche marketplaces where they can make even more money by exploring those marketplaces. I know a lot of people have been screaming agriculture and some people are saying that Eric Comlin has said that there's not high volume. Right now, they're just researching. So there's not a high volume of flow cells and usage. But let me know your thoughts and feelings. Let me know if there's anything I should explore. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys. Please remember none of this is financial advice for entertainment only. And I'll catch you in the next video. Mr. Investalot, over and out, baby.